And this is, you know, you don't know the answer to this question until you've learned the answer to the question. In other words, until you found something. Then you'll know what the better strategy is. And until then, you just have to sort of go with what you think is most reasonable. And at this point, it's always considered better. Go to another target. So I have sympathy for your idea. Yes, ma'am. Personal request on your one slide where you referenced Marconi, could you please uh, add the name Tesla? <laughs> uh, uh, and the second question is you said nobody reads Russian literature. What if they send messages to us in Russian? <laughs> I, okay, I, what, I'm I trying, what I'm trying to say is if, if your equipment's reading a math system with base two and they're sending a message in base 12, you know, how are you uh, reading these things? Okay, I've got to cut you off there because that's four questions. <laughs> but, but they're good ones, all right? And, and, and the first one was to mention Tesla. Okay, well, I'm a great fan of Tesla too, Nick. You know, uh, and, and indeed, he was uh, as important for radio, I, I'm sure, as Marconi, in fact, maybe more. Uh, but of course, you know, radio waves were predicted by Jim Maxwell, right, in the 1860s during the American Civil War. So you ought to give him credit. And then again, there was Heinrich Hertz, who actually generated radio waves in 1888. So, you know, it's a long history. It was, it was a shortcut for which I apologize. Uh, the second question was, um, yes, they won't, nobody reads Russian papers. What if they're sending us messages in Russian? Let me point out something about that, actually. People usually assume that one of the things that SETI does is you're going to get all these bits coming down the pipe out of your radio telescope and you're analyzing them, looking for patterns. I don't know, they think the value of pi is in here, George. I don't know, I learned that in seventh grade. It'd be kind of disappointing if they sent me the value of pi, but okay, maybe it's a Fibonacci series. I read Dan Brown. You know, we don't do that because what we do, what we do do is we integrate. We average the signal for a couple of minutes, the couple of minutes we're looking at any given frequency, in order to beat down the noise. It's like making a time exposure on Skyline Drive out here of the Silicon Valley at night, if you hold the shutter open for a minute, you, know, you can see all this faint stuff, but the stoplights all look simultaneously red, yellow, and green because you've lost the temporal information, right? Well, we do the same. So we're losing all the bits, right? All the modulation, that's all gone away. It's just a signal. We, all we know is they're on the air. And if, it's, if you take, for example, a television signal, you average it for three minutes, you know, a lot of the entertainment value goes away. <laughs> and I know my friends in the audience are thinking, there is no entertainment. Right? But yet, it's, okay, so, and, and, and that with that example, if you could just barely detect the signal in three minutes, then you would need 10,000 times more sensitivity to get time resolution of like a microsecond. So you could see the signal. So in other words, in other words, for the lay audience, here's the deal. You find that they're on the air, and now you have to build something much, much bigger to have a chance of getting the message. At least in the radio. In the optical, it's a little different, but in the radio. Okay. And, uh, you know, you say, well, is that going to happen? I think it's going to happen. I mean, if, if the SETI Institute or, or one of the other SETI experiments around the world, there aren't many, by the way, you know, there's a small handful, were to announce, God, we got a signal coming from 750 light years, and it's at this frequency, and it's around that star there. I think that funding would cease to be a major problem. And I think you would have the money. You'd have a worldwide effort to build that very large antenna and then get all the bits. And everybody would download these bits onto their hard drives and there would be plenty of people who spoke Russian in case that's what they're doing. So I don't worry about that. But I don't know that they'll be in Russian, Chinese, or anything like that. They're going to be, who knows what they're going to be. A lot of people say mathematics. I'm not that keen on the mathematics approach to language because it's hard to describe things like art and government, you know, with mathematics. But uh, maybe they'll just send, uh, said some guy today, just send a picture dictionary. A lot of pictures with a lot of words, and then after that, send plain text. Or just send their version of the Internet. It's so redundant that uh, you'll figure some of it out. So I'm, I'm not too much worried about the language problem. Um, with the 350 arrays, isn't City afraid that the FCC will find City for producing a signal, a signal from more than 50 hertz causing earthquakes and lightning strikes? <laughs> Uh, you're going to, have to, you're going to have to repeat the essence of that. My, my hearing, I guess, is not very good because I didn't, I didn't quite get it. You, uh, we're worried about the FCC being concerned about the signal being broadcast by 350. Producing a signal more than 50 hertz, which is the uh, standard that they only allow a certain signal. Um, uh, I believe it's less than 50 hertz. Okay. Can some, somebody who heard that tell me? Tell me did, did you hear it? Are you worried about a signal at 50 hertz? Or? 
I, I believe that the FCC has a set standard for the health. The yeah, health. right. Are, you, are, are you're worried about, okay, so you're worried about the health effects of uh, powerful transmissions? Uh, yes. Uh, there is a, um, a satellite, or not a satellite, excuse me. There is a uh, system in Alaska that can oh, produce yeah, okay. one billion hertz. Yeah, yeah, you know, you're, worried, you're worried about the HARP system yeah. and stuff like that. Okay. Now, look, to begin with, we're not broadcasting at all. Right? We don't have any transmitters on those antennas. I mean, Arecibo has a transmitter used for uh, radar studies of the solar, sy solar system and also uh, the upper atmosphere. But we don't broadcast at all, so there's not much danger there. Right? Um, in fact, the only danger at the observatory are the bees and the snakes, you know, but not from the antennas. The, uh, so, so I don't see that as a problem for us. You might say, well, the aliens, you know, they're not going to allow very, very powerful transmitters because of the health effects, but you don't have to have the transmitter on your planet. I mean, I think if you had a transmitter, you know, <laughs> running at 10 to the 17 watts, if you could do that, right, you would definitely have it in space. And, and 10 to the 17 watts, and Barney Oliver uh, used to say, you know, waveguides melt. He had a point there. And I don't think 10 to the 17 watts is very feasible. Yes? Yeah, what if they're not using radio waves, they're using some other communication mode that we don't know about. I have to tell you, uh, I, I, it's a good question, and I get this question every day in email, usually five, okay, um, along with the ones that are having difficulties with aliens in their personal lives. I get five of those, too. <laughs> the, and, and by the way, I don't think anybody's hoaxing me. They're, they're all very sincere people. I kind of enjoy talking to them, but I don't know that any of them have proven to me that they're being really visited, but I'm getting off the subject here. Uh, <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no. The, what if they're not sending radio? Yeah. Well, that could be. And the suggestions that I get are, well, you know, why not gravitational waves? And we haven't chosen radio simply because we can do radio. I mean, there is some element of that, right? Why are we doing more radio SETI, for example, than optical SETI? Well, I think that's mostly historical. Radio was invented really before lasers were invented. Uh, it, took, it took a while to figure out that the lasers actually offered you the opportunity because you can aim a laser into a, a mirror this big, right? And it makes a very tight beam on the sky. I mean... You know, optical photons are very expensive in terms of energy, but you can focus them very inexpensively, and consequently, that, that makes sense. Had we invented the laser before we invented powerful microwave radio, maybe we would do, be doing more optical and less radio. But it's all the same thing. It's still all electromagnetic radiation. And we know that that travels at the speed of light, and it's relatively inexpensive to produce, and at least in the radio, goes right through all the stuff that hangs between the stars without impediment. So it really works as a communication medium. People suggest things like gravity waves. That's their favorite, gravity waves. Now, you know, we haven't even detected gravity waves yet, even though they're big instruments. It's very hard to detect gravity waves. And by the way, it's also very hard to make gravity waves of any, of any size, right? You've got to do things like take a star and shake it, right? Now, that's a big project, even when left to the students. That's a big project. <laughs> Whereas making a radio wave that you could find, you know, a thousand light years away requires building a transmitter that fits on this stage. Okay, so, so what I say to these other people is, well, what do you suggest? And, you know, sometimes the suggestions uh, sound intriguing. You know, neutrinos and so forth are often suggested. Hard to detect neutrinos, but they have advantages. The, the one big advantage of neutrinos, you don't really have to aim the receiver. Right? The neutrinos come right through the Earth, so even if they're down there, you can find them. Right, that kind of thing. But on the other hand, the detection efficiency for neutrinos is very, very low and so forth and so on. They're very expensive. So, you know, if you've got a better idea, send me an email. But I have to warn you that a lot of people have done a lot of thinking about this.